Hey everyone, Evan Ag here from EvanAg.com and AgDesign.com, and I'm going to have a quick tutorial here for how to rip a DVD for use in iTunes or the Apple TV specifically. Um, and the great thing about this um, process is that it gives you a really nice end result. The quality looks wonderful. Uh, without a huge file size, so you can save some of that hard drive space. So uh, let's get right here into it. If I've got Handbrake open here, and I'm using the newest version, which, uh, as you can see, is 0.9.4 i3C86. And um, there's a great preset for Apple TV, so this should be a very, very simple process. First thing you're going to do is select your disk. Um, the disk itself, you don't have to select the audio or video folders here. Just select the disk itself and hit Open. And it's going to read the disk in, looking at all the titles available on the disk, and try to make the determination of which file on the disk is the actual movie that you want to rip. Now, in my case, I'm using a TV show uh, disk, so it's going to find several titles. Um, and it selects the largest one most of the time, which is great for most movies because you want the longest you know, video on the disk. In this case, though, that one large, you know, two-hour, 52-minute clip is actually a combination of all four episodes that are on the disc. Um, so if I was doing a TV show, I would want to select um, the episode itself so I could make each of those episodes a self-contained video file. Um, but in most cases, you'll be doing a movie and you only want to rip one file from the movie, so you'll want to select what appears to be the largest video in the set. And if you want to make sure you've got the right thing, there's a great button up here, the preview window, which will give you um, a nice little screenshot, a series of screenshots. And I believe there's actually a setting you can determine how many screenshots you want it to produce. Um, but in my case, 10 is more than enough. I think it's 10. Yeah. Uh, it produces a series of screenshots so you can make sure that you're looking um, at the, the right uh, video file, um, so there are no surprises when you get done and realize that you've actually ripped the wrong piece of the DVD. So the preview is very helpful. The angle, chapters, you'll usually never need to change those because it's automatically going to select the entire title um, by default. And if you need to change these, you know what you're doing anyway, so I won't even bother going into them. It tells you the duration over here of the whole clip. Next thing is the destination, and this is where it's going to save the file at. And this is where you could do some really cool things. Like, for example, I'm working with the West Wing, and let's say this is Season 1, Episode 1. I can go in and give it a name. And Handbrake has a really cool tool uh, called the Q. Now, this won't apply to anyone unless you're doing television shows or DVDs that have multiple episodes on one disc. Um, but you can actually create a Q. Um, so I can click Add to Q and it puts that in there. Then I can select the next title, change it to 1-2, add to queue. Select the next title, 1-3, add to queue. And the last one, 1-4, add to queue. And you'll see here that it, like we expected, generates four different jobs that it's going to perform. And at the end result will be that we have four video clips, uh, each one representing an episode from this disc. So a very cool tip there, but again, that will not apply to movies unless you're ripping special features or something like that as well. So that's all we need to do is in terms of telling it where we want to save the file. Next, we have our settings, and I'm going to use a preset. You could obviously customize this, um, but I would definitely recommend starting here to see how you like the results. Over here in the, uh, the sidebar, you will see a list of presets, and if you don't see it, Click on the toggle presets button. And there's a couple of them here. You can look through and see what the differences are between these. But the one we want for this tutorial is Apple TV. And we can look down here and see exactly what this setting has in it. It's going to use H.264, which is a great codec for compressing while maintaining image quality. Uh, we want to keep the same frame rates. Uh, that's not something you want to mess around with most of the time because you can get some really weird results if you do. Uh, the quality, it's going to use a constant quality of 60.78%, which you wouldn't think would be very high, but I can see very little difference between the finished product and the original in most cases. You can also choose an average bitrate if you want, or a target file size, which I wouldn't 
recommend most of the time unless you're dealing with a very specific size restriction like a like a DVD disc or a CD something to that effect there are some other options here we won't go into because like I said the default will be good enough most of the time but there they are you can even go in here and set chapter markers or titles for your chapter markers if you wanted I don't know why you'd want to uh, but if you were really a metadata freak you might want to do that and I have a tendency to want to do that if I'm being honest <laughs> but that's the last thing we need to do this is actually ready to go now all I've got to do to start the process of converting is hit the start button and it's going to um, give me a progress bar on here that tells me how the process is going in this case I've got four videos in the queue so it's going to take a little while but you can see that it's a very simple process to get your Apple TV videos converted and then of course all you have to do is import them into iTunes and uh, you can easily get them onto your Apple TV so I hope that was helpful and you all have a great day